Well, in several instances, there's an appearance, at least, you know, a lot of this will st is still yet to, to be confirmed, but there's an appearance of cover-ups and misinformation and misleading information with talking about Benghazi. Um, and, and that's one example. And when we also expand on that a little bit, and even in the, in the case of the Boston bombings, we've seen how the White House is reluctant to mention or, or even consider maybe terrorism. Can you come up with any good reasons why this administration would continue to focus on this strategy? Try, you know, is it a... Are they trying not to give credit to the enemy? What, is, what can you possibly conceive as a reason why this administration con continues to uh, refuse to admit uh, terror, at least from the onset of these types of incidents? I think there's probably two reasons. One is, e even in the prior administration, the Bush administration, there was a concern about being seen as being against a religion. So if one talked about radical Islamism, and, and terrorists uh, being a, a small minority in the, that, of that faith that are attempt, training people, raising money, training people to go out and kill innocent men, women, and children. They're trying to terrorize, to alter the behavior of others. Uh, people are reluctant to be seen as being against a religion. But the problem is um, there is an enemy. They are raising money. They are training people to kill innocent men, women, and children. And unless we are willing to say that, if we pretend that what happened at Fort Hood was workplace violence as opposed to a terrorist act by a radical, then we are fooling only ourselves. And it's, it's critically important. The second reason it seems to me that they're reluctant to talk about it is because the, the last campaign, President Obama went around saying that, that Al-Qaeda is on the run. We've killed most of their leadership and, uh, and basically the problem is going to go away. And it hasn't gone away. It is still there. And it's not going to go away in one year or four years. It's more like the Cold War than, than World War I or World War II. It's something where we're going to have to compete ideologically against the ideas, just as we had to compete against the ideas of communism. And, and so you're talking about using soft power. What, what specific ways can we do that moving forward? Well, first, the first thing you have to do is identify what the enemy is and, and what it is you're against and why you're against it. I mean, the terrorist goal is to eliminate the idea of a nation state. And the world is ordered and organized on nation states. But they're against that, and they want to break that down. And uh, it seems to me that we, if, if we're going to resist that, we, have to, we can't abandon the ideological arguments and the ideological space that exists. If we, if we had said, well, communism is just another way of having a government instead of a brutal, repressive, unworkable system that deserves, as President Reagan said, to be in the ash heap of history, uh, we would never have prevailed against communism. We, we had to identify it. We had to say what was wrong with it. Why freedom is, is a better idea and, and why people have greater opportunities if they're free than if they're repressed in a dictatorial command economy.